All right, let's talk to our next guest. Of course, the Phils are just a couple of days away uh, from spring training, pitchers and catchers, and then the uh, spring training thing, and then and then obviously late March, late March, this thing gets real with the start of a new baseball season. Let's welcome the president of baseball operations of the Philadelphia Phillies, Dave Dombrowski. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? We are doing wonderful. Great, We're excited that baseball is going to be back upon us soon. I don't right. have to tell you the town needs it, you know, with the, the – the way the football season ended. So we're, we're looking forward to getting going. Dave, let's get to this here. So um, this season, this offseason, I should say, one that many people have referred to as a quiet offseason. Now, you guys had a massive signing with Aaron Nola and otherwise no particularly big moves. To the people that say quiet offseason, do you agree with that assessment? And if so, why quiet? Well, I think overall that assessment is accurate. I mean, quiet doesn't mean inactive. I mean, we've been active on many different things as far as staying abreast of what's going on. But yeah, it's been quiet after our first real big goal was to get a starting pitcher with Aaron becoming a free agent. Of course, we were fortunate to re-sign him, which is a big signing for us. That really stabilized our starting rotation. And when you say, well, why? I think there's a combination of factors. One is we have a good club. Um, that's apparent. There's not gaping holes. And we're also in an opportunity where giving opportunity to some of our young players, which people are not usually very open-minded to or understanding. But we think if we're going to be the organization that we would like to be throughout, that we would we want to give young players an opportunity. And with that, and those guys are guys like Christopher Sanchez, who did a good job for us. And if you count Christopher in, that gives us five really established major league starters, uh, Kirkering in the bullpen. And if he comes in, that gives us six people, three from the left-hand side with Alvarado, Soto, and Strom, three from the right-hand side with Sir Anthony Hoffman, and then also with uh, Kirkering there. And our positional players, we want to give the opportunity to Rojas. Uh, he did not have a good postseason offensively, but he played well for us beforehand. He's an outstanding defensive outfielder. So it makes us better right off the bat in that regard. And so when you look at our infield, well, we have Harper, we have Stott, we've got Turner, we've got Bohm, we've got JT behind the plate, you've got Schwarber as your DH, you've got Stanos, you've got Marsh. Well, there, there's not a lot of other holes there if you're going to give Rojas the opportunity. And part of the thing which ends up taking place with rules and, and understanding is that, for example, if you sign a, a player that's a veteran outfielder, let's just say, and say, okay, well, we'll put him in there. Well, a, that doesn't really open an, an opportunity for Rojas. And, and what ends up taking place is, in our case, we've been involved with trying to sign some starting pitchers for depth purposes more so, relief pitchers for depth purposes. Although there have been a couple that would have been established guys for our, um, our bullpen, too, that we thought would definitely be an upgrade. But the, the free agents want guarantees that they're going to have that job, and we can't sign them a free agent starting pitcher that is, for example, we are involved in Yamamoto. People are aware of that. Well, you can guarantee Yamamoto is starting spot, but if you're going with that type of philosophy, um, most people are going to take a chance where they have the opportunity to go ahead and, and pitch or play there rather than come into our situation. Although we still stay abreast of what's going on and we're in a spot that not only now, but also during spring training, We'll keep abreast of what's going on with all clubs, and you never can tell what will take place. Dave, you mentioned Rojas a, a few times there. Do you think it is likely that he is a starter day one of this season or not? Likely, yes. Definitively, no. Um, so I think that's uh, the answer would be yes. Uh, we saw enough at the last couple of months in August and September um, that we really like what we saw. I've talked to our hitting people um, at length about his progress over the winter time. He's worked extremely hard. He's made adjustments that he needs to make. And not only, uh, I'm not saying he's going to come up and hit 300 with 20 home runs right off the bat, but I think he can do enough offensively and contribute from an offensive perspective. And when you add his speed in there um, and then his defense, all of a sudden um, he becomes a, a real plus for us. So, yes, I do think that he will be up, but he has to earn that. We're not going to just give it to him. Dave, we spent a lot of time as a show, and I'm sure a lot of people out there did, um, discussing and debating the merits of Rojas versus Reese Hoskins versus mm -hmm. a free agent. 
namely that y- you could have uh, put Kyle Schwerber back in left field and had Reese Hoskins as the DH while Bryce Harper would be the first baseman. How tempting or not was the option to keep Reese? How far did that go in your mind until you eventually said, okay, the Reese thing is over. We love him, but he's gone, and we're going with what we got here otherwise. Well, we love Reese Hoskins, first of all. I mean, he, you can't ask for a, um, a more stable individual that's a Philly organization person, that's a Philly city individual. Reese is a tremendous person. He and his wife, Jamie, did, did so much. He's also is a really good player. He can hit and hit with power. So he's a good player. He's a Philly from the very beginning. These are the type of things that are tough decisions. We felt, um, and, and no, um, I don't mean this in a negative vein, but we think that one of the other biggest things we need to do was to try to get Kyle out of left field on a regular basis. Um, his knees over the last couple of years, last year he didn't run as well. He catches what he gets to. Uh, he's a good offensive player, but we think that the defense and the speed help us a great deal more. And so when you look at what our our situation is as far as what we think is a better club, we look at it with having the outfield defense in, out there for us with some, of course, contribution from an offensive perspective. Well, if you do that, you move Schwarber to DH. Well, putting Bryce at first, there's just not that room for Reese. So that's really what it came down to. And I can understand we debated that ourselves. We had a lot of meetings in that regard. Um, you could also say, well, do you leave Bryce in the outfield? We think it's better at this point to move him to first base. We think he's going to be an outstanding defensive first baseman. And, and I, one thing that's not a, doesn't catch people's eyes that they're really not excited about a great deal. I get it. I mean, I, I love power hitting, right? You love everybody loves a home run. Defense doesn't get as much attention. But when all of a sudden you put Rojas in the outfield and you put Harper at first base, um, you become a really good defensive uh, ball club compared to the other combination of having uh, Schwarbs and left and, and Reese at first base. Dave, how important is it for you to re-sign Zach Wheeler, and when do you anticipate that'll take place? Well, we would love to sign Zach today if we could. Um, I think it's important that we re-sign him. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. I uh, really never get into negotiations publicly, but you can say it's something that's important for us, and we would love to get that done. So um, I, I know uh, Wheels loves it in um, Philadelphia, loves being part of the organization, and I would say that it's a priority for us. How happy are you with the current rotation, and what's the likelihood you'd consider adding a starter like Jordan Montgomery or Blake Snell? Well, we're happy with our rotation, and when you look at it in all the analytical aspects of it, too, I think they rank us as the number one rotation in baseball, so that's pretty good um, in, in a lot of things, or at least in the top three. So we like our rotation. We like it with Zach. We like it with um, – you know, Aaron Nola coming back. Uh, Suarez is really a good pitcher. The one thing we'd have to get out of Suarez, and he'll be in camp on time for the first time in a long time due to other time to immigration. And in the WBC, uh, we'd like to get more innings out of him during the regular season, and we think we can do that. Um, Tyon Walker is a really good 3-4 type of starter. He won 15 games for us, but he pitched 170 innings. And then if you're going to give Sanchez the opportunity. So I can't tell you that somebody doesn't, ball in your lap at some point and you say, gee, that's a, an opportunity we can't turn down. But I think you also have to always combine it with um, we were in on a couple relief pitchers too. Um, we, we liked them. We thought that they would be positives for us. But for example, the situation uh, with one, he wanted to go start somewhere. We didn't have a starting opportunity. We thought the guy was more is more of a relief pitcher. So there was somebody else we were in on that we liked a lot. He wanted to go close to home, which was on the West Coast. It's like Yamamoto situation. We we're very involved in that, and I think people would be shocked if they found out how much money that we put on the table for him. But it really came down to, um, and even though there's a lot of regard for our organization, playing in the city, how we support the club. I mean, the atmosphere at the ballpark is second to none. But he wanted to go to the Dodgers. That was just the way it was. Um, and I don't know that it had as much to do with the presentation of other things that happened in his earlier in his life where he was more of a Dodger fan. So um, again, you keep an open mind towards everything. I mean, every single day I'm, I'm looking at wh- who our list of players are, who might make sense for us. But you know, for again, somebody might be okay. You, you need a, and I can understand, Hey, we could use a better bat off the bench. I've seen, well, we might, we, that might end up happening, but 
and in the outfield, what ends up happening is there's some people, if you try to sign them, they want, we want to be your left fielder or we want to be your center fielder. Well, right now with giving Rojas the opportunity, um, those are things that we just can't do, but yet look every single day and you just can't tell what will end up happening. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned the WBC uh, last season. It it sort of contributed to maybe a a slower start. How will the organization do things differently this spring to hit the ground running to avoid the slow starts of the last two seasons? Well, and there's been meetings and uh, phone calls and uh, Rob Thompson's been on it with our staff and participated in some of those calls We'll have our meetings, of course, next week when everybody's here in person. But I think that um, we probably just need to be in a position that we're more focused on that, not just getting ready for the season to go from there, maybe turn it up a notch. Last year, there was a lot of things that that happened. So two years ago, a little bit different than I think last year. But last year, when you look at all our participants in the WBC, and I'm a supporter, I think WBC is great, but it didn't help us last year because we had three of our positional players in Schwarber, um, Turner and JT that just didn't get enough at bats to get ready for the beginning of the season. Um, Harper, of course, wasn't ready. You lose Hoskins right before opening day. Well, that, and you put Derek Hall and he gets hurt. So that's a lot of things that affect in that regard. And it also affected our pitching. Suarez wasn't ready. Tyon Walker wasn't, wasn't quite ready. So, um, I, I think we're in a position where, um, having our players in camp more, getting them more ready ourselves, having that thought process, um, and the focus in that regard will be a way that we can be better prepared to start the season. Dave Dombrowski here with us on WIP. Of course, it fills the spring training in just a couple of days. Dave, Aaron Nola, I'm curious, how worried were you specifically about the Atlanta Braves and their desire to sign Aaron Nola? Did that drive you to get to the price you got to because the Braves are the Braves and they're in your division? Well, I was very worried that he would go to the Atlanta Braves or anybody else, but I think the Braves were a legitimate um, person that you knew that they had interest. They publicly said that. You, I, I had a pulse of what their offer was, um, and I knew Aaron wanted to stay in Philadelphia once we got into the process. He had made that clear all along, but once he was out in free agency, I'm always worried in that case because our best chance is to sign a guy like Aaron, um, and you can say whomever it may be, Zach Wheeler this year, is before they become a free agent, because once they become a free agent, anything can happen out there. So you're in a position where anybody can can overwhelm you. But yeah, I mean, normally when you sign a free agent, um, you give them more money than you would like to give them or more years, that combination. So you get driven to do that. But that's what free agency can create, although you see some free agents out there this year. Um, that are still sitting there and haven't apparently received the dollars they would want. But yeah, it, it was a concern that we would lose Aaron and he's really a good pitcher. And I, we really, not only has he been a good pitcher, he's a Philly. You saw the adjustments he made as the year progressed with the, the pitch clock, which was important. Uh, he was quicker to the plate last year at later in the year when he established his, his slide step. So he can, continues to improve and he's the type of guy that we think can age very well. So uh, we're, we're thrilled that he's back. Dave, fascinating situation a couple months ago. Um, Scott Boris came out and indicated that Bryce Harper wants a new deal with the Phillies. The story publicly seemingly just went away. It's almost like a lot of people probably forgot about it. I know you have not. Should Bryce Harper, who's been unbelievable, should he expect a new deal from the Phillies, or are you very comfortable looking him in the eye and saying, listen, Big guy. Love you. You've been amazing. But that's why John Middleton committed $330 million to you five years ago. What we signed you for is what you're going to get. I mean, should he expect a new deal or not? Well, I would not get into any contract situations publicly. Just never really do that. Um, we'll say of the utmost respect for Bryce, tremendous players, said everything for the our, our club and, and the team and the city. So he's the type of guy you want to have. Um, he's in a situation where you can always desire or want anybody can anything that they would like. Um, we end up making business decisions that sometimes are difficult, but I, I mean, the way, one way I would just say it without getting into any particulars is that uh, we're thrilled that he's on board. We, he's, we know he's at Philly for eight more years and um, there's a lot of times to digest things, but it's a situation where um, we're thrilled that he's on board. And um, again, you can desire and want anything you, you would like, but I think it's also the apparent knowing Bryce when he gets to spring training under any circumstances, 
he's ready to go, and you know you're going to get 100 percent from him in every regard. Dave, who's the closer of the team? Well, I think that'll be a decision that we'll make in the spring, um, and I, I'm not sure even coming out of here that we'll per se have a designated closer. Uh, you work with your managers, and I think we have a few guys that can close games. I mean, Alvarado can close games. Soto's had over 30 saves. Uh, he can close games. Um, Sir Anthony's closed games in the past. Um, Hoffman has the ability to do that. His stuff last year was tremendous. He, he continued to move up the ladder. Uh, I wouldn't even discount a guy like Kirker in closing some games. So I think we're more of a club that looks at, and a manager like, using a closer by, if you want to say committee, but on matchups more than you do just say this is a designated guy, unless you have somebody like uh, Mariano Rivera. Um, of course, you'd give him the ball. And last year when we went came out of the year, we didn't really expect Kimbrell to be our closer. He ended up closing the games and just moved into that role, and I think about May and continued in that role. But uh, we feel we have a lot of guys who can close games. Lead-off hitter, do you have a preference? Stott, <laughs> Schwarber? Turner, is there a Dave Dombrowski February 7th preference? I do, but I think I share that more with Rob Thompson. I'll let him answer that <laughs> question. I think that's uh, that's uh, we, we talk about those things, and a lot of people disagree and have different thought processes. Yeah, I have my own personal preferences, but uh, that's Topper's decision, and I'll let him uh, make that one. Dave, is uh, the organization cool with Taiwan Walker? I mean, he, he went really public after the offseason, after the season, you know, Social media stuff. You guys cool with him? Yeah, we're fine. Um, in fact, the other day I was just talked. Um, and, and first of all, I understand when a guy gets frustrated that he doesn't pitch in that. And when people look at it, they sometimes it's hard to even for when you're the person involved. When you look at the whole circumstances, we didn't need a fourth starter for a long time, uh, just the way the postseason lined up. And um, so, and he hadn't thrown the ball. So we just, we went with the other person. Walker was our fourth starter th- throughout the year, for sure, third or fourth starter. But uh, Rob Thompson's talked to him. Uh, he talked to him at great length uh, within the last couple of weeks. And he's fine. He's ready to go, and we're fine with him. So we're looking forward to him being in camp. Dave, two final questions here. The first, and you guys got so close last year to the World Series, and obviously could have won it all, um, five games away from winning it all. It was another great thrill for the fans to get that close, though. Um any lessons learned from the elimination last year in the postseason or any part of the postseason journey? Well, I don't know if it's as much lesson learned. I mean, most of our lessons were pretty good until we got to the very end. Um, we got up two games to zero. I, I, I don't think our players did take anything for granted at that point, but I will give uh, one thing that ended up taking place, and, and we have looked at this over the winter time. is that I give the Diamondbacks credit – um, they really uh, adjusted, and we chased a lot those last few games uh, out of balls out of the strike zone. And I think that's something that we're susceptible to doing, but it's also things you can work on. And so it's been a focus for us in that regard, even in discussing with our hitters over the winter time. And we've got some different thought process and different drills that we'll focus on when we get to spring training to hopefully help us a little bit in that regard. And, and Dave, the Andrew Painter rehab How's it going, and when does the organization expect him to be able to pitch in, in any game? Obviously, it would first happen in a, in a minor league game. What's the timeline for Andrew Painter? Well, Painter's rehab is going fine. He's uh, here actually in the minor league camp in our, our camp. Uh, he Right now, he's where he needs to be. But he's just tossing at this point, which is where he should be. I don't really look uh, for Andrew to pitch this year. I'm looking towards 2025. I guess you can always be surprised, but I don't want to put that pressure on him, but uh, – so far, everything's been just as, as thought uh, from the surgery. The rehab's been great, but that's uh, really more the time frame than anything this year. All right, Dave, and I got one more. I said two more. I have a third and final. Here we go. I mean, baseball operations covers a lot of ground, including music selection in the clubhouse. <laughs> Should dancing on my own be put to bed because, you know, you did not win the World Series the last two years, or is it too integral to this group of players the Phillies fans in a recent Phillies history to shove it aside. Should it be embraced moving forward or not? No, I, I give you the, the, the realistic answer on that. I like this song. I didn't know the song before it got played a couple of years ago. I like this song and really my vote counts as zero in this regard. <laughs> the, the players will make that decision themselves. And uh, I, you can make an argument uh, any way you would like on that one. I like this song, but 
those guys will sit down and decide if they should play it or not, and they'll they will not ask my opinion whatsoever. <laughs> it only goes yeah. so far. The, the, bo- the boss's right. leverage only goes so far. Dave, uh, good luck. Obviously, with you know what's up ahead in the coming weeks with spring training, and then ultimately the start of the season. And we look forward to to talking it throughout it. Thank you, Dave. Sounds great. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right, there Bye-bye. he is, Dave Dombrowski, president of Baseball Operations.